you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13. Just that one verse. Isaiah chapter 66, verse number 13. If you'll just turn in your Bibles right there, we'll read real quick. I am so glad to see each and every one of y'all. Um, as all of y'all know, this is usually a, a very tough time of the year for me because I lost my mom three years ago now, but I didn't lose her. I know where she's at. She's in heaven. She is uh, She is having a great Mother's Day. Yes. I just can't wait to spend it with her again. Amen? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 66, verse number 13. I hope all of y'all are there. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, read it, and then we'll pray. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 66, 13, it says, As one whom... His mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Let's read it one more time. As one whom is his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love You. And Lord, we are so thankful this morning for the singing. Lord, we are so thankful for Mama. Lord, we are so thankful for Your love also. Lord, I just pray that You be with us. Lord, that You bless us. And that You just move in such a mighty and a powerful way. Lord, we love You so much. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Y'all, this, uh, this passage right here, I want you to understand that... Uh, God is comparing His love right here to that of a mother. And, you know, I, I got to thinking, and it really hit me last year, and if y'all were um, come last year or heard me last year, you'll know what I'm talking about. God created you mamas, amen? And so, you know, we have a joke, us men do, where we say, uh, there was a man that God saw that he was a very righteous man, and God wanted to grant him a wish. And God asked him, he said, uh, uh, anything you want, you can have. And the man says, you know, God, he says, I really love going to Hawaii. He said, but the only way to get there is to take a boat or a plane. And he said, I'd really love to be able to drive there. And he said, it'd be nice to have a bridge from California to Hawaii. And God says, you know, all the things you could want, and that's the only thing you want. And he says, well, let me think. He says, I, well, i tell you what, God, there is one other thing. He says, I would really love to understand my wife. I mean, I'd love to know what she's thinking and know how she, why she says what she says, these things. And uh, God sits there and he thinks about it for a minute. He says, i tell you what, you want that bridge two-lane or four-lane, amen? <laughs> You know, we want to understand our wives. Men do. Amen. And, and yeah, we, we don't. But you know what? The Bible tells us in Genesis that God created us men and y'all women in His image. Yeah. God gave y'all parts of Him. And I know that's kind of weird and crazy to think about, but seriously, He gave y'all what you are. And I'm going to be honest. I believe He gave y'all the best. He gave y'all the greatest gifts there were. You know, we talk about in our Bible over and over and over, we try to p compare who God is and what God is. And the Bible is so clear and it, it breaks down God in so many different ways and forms. But I believe that some of the greatest forms that we know about God he put in y'all mamas and y'all women. I want to give y'all some of these qualities. I'm going to give y'all nine of these qualities this morning. And I want to compare them between God and y'all. And how y'all show the most beautiful part of our God, of our Lord and our Savior. Number one, God is with us. Isaiah 41 verse 10 tells us that God is with us. No matter what we do, where we go, God is with us. And you know, I remember uh, my mama told me, she said, boy, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out of this world. Amen. But the point was, since the day I was born, my mama knew where I was. She was with me everywhere I went, everything I did. She kept a check on me. 
And from the day I was born, there ain't nobody on this earth that could say that from the day I was born until the day she left this earth. They knew more about where her son was than my mama. You know, I remember I would be going down the road. Mama couldn't sleep, and I don't know why, but she just never did sleep much. She'd be up all hours of the night. And it would be 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning, and I would be driving down the road, going to work. And guess what? I'd get a phone call from Mama, of all people. I'm just checking on my baby. I'm 30-something years old, y'all. I'm just checking on my baby. God is with us, and that He instilled that beautiful thing in Mama. No matter where Mama's babies are, Mama knows. Nobody might not know. The FBI might be looking, but Mama knows, praise God. Mama knows where her babies are. God is with us, and so is Mama. Number two, God is our refuge and our help. Psalms 46 1 tells us this. God is our refuge and our help. And I'm sitting there and I thought about what about mama? When the world turns on us, mama will always be there. Mama. You know, I've I've heard so many people say over and over and over that they feel like the whole world has turned against them. The whole world hates them and it's just so wicked. But then there you have a mama crying over that precious baby. I remember, and I know this is awful, but that there was a, a shooting up there, up there in New, up north where that guy, and y'all know which one I'm talking about, the Sandy Hook. And the daddy even made the comment, he said, I wish my son would have never been born. But there was mama. Mama will never leave you. When the whole world hates you, mama will be there for you. Mama loves you. Mama has that unconditional love. You know, I, I remember when Amy was pregnant with the kids. And from the time she conceived those babies in her womb, she would get so excited. She would just, she'd just go crazy. Every time them youngins would kick and, and, and move and twist, she said, feel my stomach, feel it. And the excitement that was inside of her. She'd ask me, she said, here, won't you want to feel it? And I'd feel it and I'd be like, oh, you know. And finally one day she said, why don't you get so excited? I said, well, I've got to explain it like a man, I guess. We, it's like Christmas. You have that present under the tree, but until you can open it and play with it, you know, it ain't all that exciting to us. Of course, you know how us men are. We open our mouths when we shouldn't and say things we shouldn't. But my point was this. From the day she conceived them babies, that excitement hit her. And I promise you, no matter what, as much as them babies might drive her crazy, you don't mess with them babies. Number three. God is forgiving and merciful. The Bible tells us this in 1 John 1.9. God is forgiving and He is merciful. And I'm going to tell you, praise God, He is forgiving and He is merciful. But you know what? So is Mama. No matter what we do in life, God, Mama's there. Mama loves us. You ever heard that old saying, only a mama could love that face? Amen. Yeah. Only a mama could love that baby. You know, I've, I've told y'all again, sometimes to me, a newborn baby ain't that pretty. Sometimes they got cone heads and they just, they just ain't that pretty to me. I'm sorry. I know it's the prettiest baby you've ever had. But to me, uh, when they first come out, it's just like, oh, look, they're so beautiful. I don't know what you're looking at. Amen. But you can't tell a mama no different. That's mama's baby. And mama will defend and fight for that baby when nobody else will. And so will our God. When the whole world hates you, God is merciful. And so is mama. What about this next one? Number four. God is omnipresent. So is mama. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know, I was a teenager. And I had went to the movies. I had taken my girlfriend to the movies. And I'm sitting in the movies. And all of a sudden, I hear... 
And I, and my girlfriend at the time, she says, what's wrong? I said, that was my mama. She said, no, it wasn't that. I mean, that theater was full of people. I said, yes, it was. And I got up and I snuck like I was going to the bathroom or something there. Sure enough, was my mama. She was everywhere. No matter what I did, mama knew. I couldn't get away from it. God has this omnipresence where He's everywhere at all times. He's watching over His children. And so is Mama. Mama knows, like I said a minute ago, Mama knows where we are at all times, no matter how old we get. Mama is always worried about her babies. Always. Number five. God is good. Psalms 34, 8 tells us this. And I'm going to just leave this one short. What can I say? It's mama. Amen. Amen. Mama is good. No matter what, mama is good. Number six. God is compassionate and gracious. Psalms 103, 8 tells us. God is compassionate and gracious. You know, I, I compared this to Mama is the world's greatest doctor. You know, when I was a small boy, no matter what would have been wrong with me, I don't need no specialist. I don't need no no nurse or no... I, I need Mama. Nobody could make the pain go away. Nobody could make the sorrow go away. Like mama. When you lay on your mama, especially as a small child, but even as an adult, I remember I was in my 30s just a few years before mama died, and I'd lay on my mama, and y'all, there is no sweeter spot than laying with mama. And mama is just like God, so compassionate. The most wonderful doctor ever. God is compassionate and gracious. Number seven. God is powerful and mighty. Now this one's kind of funny. God is powerful and God is mighty. And Psalms 24, 8 tells us that. You ever heard of Mama Bear? Amen. <laughs> you know what is amazing? In the animal kingdom, the mama, when they she has her cubs, even the big daddies won't come mess with mama or them cubs. They know better. You don't mess with mama's babies. Amen. Mama will kill somebody over her babies. She will hurt somebody over her babies. So for, some, for mama to be so sweet and soft and loving and gracious and all that, she can get mean over her babies. Amen. You ever, I, I remember seeing in the animal kingdom once again a lion. The, those mama... Lions, lioness, whatever you want to call her, she has those little babies. And even those big bad boys, they don't mess with mama. You don't mess with mama. You know what? God tells us over and over in His Word, you don't mess with God's people. You don't mess with Israel because God will defend them. And it's the most beautiful picture of a mama with her babies. Number eight, God is faithful and righteous. God is faithful and righteous. And the Bible tells us that in Psalms 145, verse 17. And this is where I wrote this one. Mama never gives up on you. You know, I remember one time uh, Mama had bought a grill. And I might have told y'all this story before, but Mama bought a grill. And I told Mama, I was like 20, 18, 19, 20, I don't remember. And I said, Mama, it won't fit. She said, yes, it will. I said, Mama, it won't fit. She said, yes, it will. And I, y'all fought with that thing for 30 minutes. Guess what? It fit. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> but let me tell you something. There was other times in my life where... I had a test coming up or I had something that was coming up that was kind of big in my life. 
And I said, Mama, I just don't know if I can do it this time. She said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And she was right. When I heard Mama say, you can do it, I believed it. Even if the world said you can't do it, Mama would never tell you you was a failure. Never. You know, I'm going to tell y'all, my mom, she didn't want me to be no preacher. She said, preachers, they, 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 they suffer with their flock. They, they, they see a lot of things and, and it hurts and it breaks their hearts and this, that, and other. For the longest time, she didn't want me to be a preacher. But I said, Mama, I got to be. That's what God's called me to be. And one day she, she saw me preach and she said, Jonathan, she says, you're right, God called you to be a preacher. And you're going to be a good one. You do it. I'm going to tell you something. When I had mama's approval, nothing else mattered. It don't matter what any of y'all say. My mama said, I can be a preacher, all right? So y'all leave me alone. Amen. Yeah, but hey, when mama tells you you can do it, it don't matter what the world says. And let me tell you something else. Because you know, even when you fail, mama's not going to give up on you. When you fall, she's going to pick you up and she's going to clean you off. And you say, you keep going. She is going to be there for you. Mama will never give up on you. You know, just like they sung a minute ago, my, my God, we could not get to God. We couldn't make it to God. And He knew that. So He made a way for us. And that's what Mama does. All throughout life, we can't do it. And Mama makes a way. Mama shows us, yes, we can. And finally, y'all, I'm going to close with this one. Number nine. And all of y'all are going to get this one. God is love. 1 John 3, 1. God is love. Mama is love. Who else would get up and stay up with a sick baby, screaming babies, all hours of the night. Who else would sacrifice everything she has for that baby, Mama? Who else would be there no matter what, Mama? Who else, when the judge says you're guilty, when the lawyers and the, the, the jury says you're guilty, and the world's giving up on you, who's the only one that's going to be there? Mama. You know why? Because the Bible says that God is love. And when you look at that in the Greek, there's many forms of love, but God is agape love. And the most highest quality of love that ever existed. It is an unconditional, unwavering, it is the just most unbelievable form of love there ever has been. And that is Mama. Mama loves you no matter what. Mama loves you even if you fail in life. Mama loves you. And Mama will be there for you. And so will God. When God created y'all women, when God created Mama, He took the biggest chunk of Himself and He placed it in you. And I believe that with all my heart. Somebody says, I've never seen God. Then you ain't looked at your Mama. You ain't looked at the sacrifices your mama has made for you your entire life. You say God's invisible. Is mama invisible? No. Everywhere you go, there's a piece of mama about you. And she's with you. Even to this day, my mama's with me. Y'all wonder why I talk so much. There you go. That's why. Mama's with me. Nobody in life has a bigger influence than mama. You know, when a, when, a, when a child has a mama and a daddy, they have such an advantage in life. When they grow up and they leave and they, they start their own life as an adult and they've had that, that wonderful mother dad home, they have such an advantage. 
But there's so many out there right now that mama is raising them babies all alone. And I'm going to tell you something. They're heroes. They're heroes. Daddies couldn't do what mamas do. We just, I don't, we can't. We're not wired like that. Mama, you're a hero. When the whole world turns their back on us, you're there. You are the greatest picture of God I've ever seen. And I just want to say thank you. Mama, your, your job, there ain't enough. You might be a housewife. You might be a house mama. And they say, you don't have a job. <laughs> mama, don't you ever think you don't have a job. You have the greatest job there ever was. You may be raising the next county commissioner or mayor or governor or president for that matter, senator, who knows. You might just be raising a construction worker. But mama, I promise you, you are the most important person in that child's life. You're a hero. And you keep fighting. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for Mama, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for what Mama stands for. Lord, I thank you that Mama is the most beautiful picture of you that we have on this earth right now. And Lord, I want to thank you for each and every one of these Mamas. Lord, we, we couldn't do this without you, and we can't do this without Mama. Lord, you are unbelievable, and so is Mama. And Lord, I just want to thank you for making Mama. Lord, you knew Adam needed a helpmate in that garden. But Lord, you knew Cain and Abel needed a Mama. Lord, I just want to say thank you so much. Lord, I just want to say thank you for my Mama. Lord, I know she's in heaven today. And Lord, I know she's good. Lord, give her a hug for me and tell her I said thank you. For all the mamas that are in heaven right now, Lord. Just hug them and tell them we said thank you. Lord, for all the mamas that are here present right now today. Thank you. For all the mamas that are watching live, thank you. Lord, I just want to say, be with each and every one today. And let them have a wonderful, wonderful day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to let Matt and Pam and they're going to sing us a song or two. And then uh, we're going to close out. We're going to have the bucket right over here. So if y'all want to drop any time.